So I made my choices for the level here. I grabbed another critter, mainly because the other level four thing didn't impress me. It was a two option card that uh, both were destroyed, I think, if they were used. Uh, and this is a somewhat sturdier creature with six hit points. Um, not terribly effective attacking. Give me some XP. And if I hold off on using it, I've got some decent movement, but it's a slow card. And then I took one of these uh, plus one wounds as well. With Cragheart, I did another replacement. Oh, this is the last one of a plus one for a minus one. I like getting crap out of my deck. <laughs> and again, this was a tough card to choose because the other one from this level is probably stronger, but I need speed. And this is one of the few things that allows him to go fast. And I'm finding myself in situations where a move attack seems to be pretty good. Uh, the retaliate, well, at least I can do a two point move that's fast. And same situation here, I've got a four point move that's fast and a two target kind of weak attack, but it gives some XP. Neither card, neither part of the card would be uh, lost during an encounter, so uh, that seems pretty good. I don't think there's any items that I want particularly at this point. I got room for another hand over here, and I think that's about it. Uh, I could take one of those melee weapons, like the one that adds poison or whatever, but I'm kind of thinking... Eh. I don't melee much with him, so, uh, and this did not add a melee action you know, to my pile, so I think I'm going to hold off on that um, and just collect the money. Now, what do I do with the money that I'm collecting? Well, <sighs> Craghart had enough cash to maybe buy an improvement, but for 50 bucks, which is what he has really available, you know, he could get him something like an extra target. Um, or an extra attack, but you have to double it if there's multiple targets on the card already. And the cards that I most want to increase the attack for are going to have that. So I'm going to hold on to my cash and see what happens. One nice thing is my hit points are going up at least. <laughs> uh, for her, I already talked a little bit about this. Grabbed another plus two fire, another good card to have in the deck basically. That's about it. Now, at this point, I'm going to do my city event. We'll see what that is, because maybe that'll give me something I want to invest in. You're walking across the silent bridge, headed toward the sleeping lion to get a quick meal when you see a quattro standing in front of a small cart laden with plates of food and curious contraptions. Come try the delicacies of the East, the quattro barks. Food enhanced with science. Flavors beyond your wildest imagination. You can stop and try the food, or have a less adventurous. Let's try the food. What the hell? We got a quattro. I'm sure it'll be yummy. Uh, yeah. You decide to indulge in the unknown and see what the quattro is offering. It looks very pleased. Instructs you to inhale a tube of vapors, then take a bite from a bowl full of tiny golden spheres. As the spheres melt in your mouth, the taste mixes with the aroma. You pay what you can, but the quattro seems solely focused on how much you enjoy the food. So. For three gold each, we each get a bless. Now that's a better deal than the ten gold for two bless, but it doesn't have any uh, follow-up effects. I think this means it gets shuffled back into the deck or something. I'm going to have to look that up and make sure I don't have any others. It probably gets tucked in the bottom until there's a reshuffle. Such cards do go to the bottom of the deck. Um, I had a few from both the road and from the city. I don't think I've reshuffled the road deck yet, so I just tucked those on the bottom for trying to maintain the order, but I don't know if I did right. Uh, for the city, I know I had a reshuffle fairly recently, so I put all but the most recent one and reshuffled those in, and then put the most recent one on the bottom. Now, this kind of saddens me because what it means is I might see the same events again. Okay, that's not terrible. But then it becomes sort of a memory game with some of them. And, you know, uh, I usually tend to make the right choice when there's a right choice, 
but some of them like, hey, do I fight these things or run away from them? And I get boned in either direction. Anyway, uh, I give the bonuses for the blesses. I've got to take the money off. And I don't think that changes anything. I don't know where I'm going to go. Uh, I don't feel like making that decision tonight. Little, I've been here, little markers, but could return. Um, okay, they do help a little bit. But for to a large extent, I don't really have a grasp on the story because it's going in multiple directions that I want to follow. Maybe I should have stayed, you know, on kind of a linear path on one of these. Um, but yeah, I mean, I know that I could go hunt down the gloom or I could go after the merchant. Those are sort of the two main lines that I seem to have available right now. Well, but I don't remember which one's result in which. So I'm going to, in order to make rational decisions, I'm going to have to research through the book, which is one reason I don't want to make my decision right now. I think I want to start going back after the merchant. I'm tired of <laughs> these fucking uh, crypts. But on the other hand, um, I think there were paths that went through the crypt and then there's like the diamond mine and stuff like that, that maybe I want to do. Um, but I gotta worry. The merchant fleas prevent some and may prevent some that I still have on the board. Another thing is this little yellow marker fell off. I don't know if it's just a random scrap or, yeah, it's from here. I went into there, right? The barrel area. And now it's stuck to my damn finger. That was easy enough to find. It's easy as seeing the numbers in this light uh, with my eyes. So even if I want to research, I may have some difficulty with that. I'm beginning to lose a little bit of my taste for the let's explore everything possible. Let's not. Let's try to get through the story in what I consider a reasonable ma manner. I'll get another chance to play this. My wife and I, I'm pretty sure, are going to try the campaign. And I'll let her make a lot of the decisions, or at least have a great deal of influence on them. Um, eh, I, uh, so, I'm going to chase after the merchant. And what I decided to do is, the from the warehouse, one of the options was the Vibrant Grotto. But in order to do this, you need the power of enhancement, i.e. you had to do the thing with that Aether person or whatever. Okay, um, so I don't know what it's going to be, but you gingerly step into the entryway of the Crooked Bone. I guess that's a bar. Careful to avoid the broken glass nails. I think that's hers and other treacherous things. Glance around the room and see nothing but the usual detritus. Before you call out to hail, though an explosion from an upper room violently shakes the entire building. Damn it all to the abyss, Hale's disembodied voice yells out. I set up my work in the most out-of-the-way, uninviting, decrepit little hovel, and grand idiots still manage to stumble in and disrupt my research. The translucent woman suddenly appears before. Before what? <laughs> you do not know that your mere presence in this building changes the flow of the ether, causing unanticipated currents that produce catastrophic consequences, right? I mean, how could you not know that? Oh, you do know. Hale closes her eyes and begins to take deep breaths, fading a little out of view with each exhale. Yes, I did. You know, honestly, this kind of stuff in an RPG, I don't like the pre-planned, pre-written stuff. And when I'm playing solo type games, I don't know how much it adds. I don't know. It would, it would more in a group to read it aloud. Um, Yes, I did agree to help you. I had hoped the memory was a nightmare of some kind, but it wasn't, so it can't be helped now. Uh. <laughs> the least you can do in return, however, is to warn me before you cross the threshold. She gives you an icy stare. So what do you want, anyhow? Let's make this quick. You explain to her the situation with Jaxera and the need to locate where she is hiding. Ah! A simple scrying matter. Well then, we are in luck, Hale begins. Or rather, I'm in luck. The main component I would need for such a task is Bitherroot. And I ran out of it just last week. I was going to gather more, but now I can just send you to get it instead. 
Everyone wins, except those infernal forest imps who terrorize my usual gathering spot. I hope quite a few of them will end up dead. A small map drops into... I'm, I'm sure I like her. A small map drops into your hand, and with a wave of Hale's arms, suddenly powerful force pushes you out her door. Remember, ring the bell when you come back and wait 45, 47 seconds before entering the door. You're able to follow the map to a network of small caves just north of the Dagger Forest. The place is teeming with life, lush, massive plants, as well as a number of hostile animals. Special rules, the treasure tiles can only be looted using a loot action. They cannot be looted by normal end-of-turn looting. Uh-oh. That sucks. Okay, well, uh, our goal in this scenario is a little different. And we're going to have to plan our cards based on the special rule, there's no question. And probably a knowledge of how many um, <coughs> total tiles we need to find. That seems kind of reasonable that there are five of them. I don't want to go too deep into what's going on. Um, we're in a situation, there's some cave bears, some forest sprites, and an earth demon, and a bunch more earth demons here. Uh, all that's set up, that's all one room, because these aren't doors. These, I think, do count as doors, so the, what's behind them isn't entirely exposed, uh, but I have all the furniture in play. So I know that there's one treasure hiding back there. I also know that there's a shaman somewhere in the caves, and that's about it. Um, eh, what I don't know is I did not have one of these, I hope. Oh, jeez, I don't know, because my top thing is one of these, but I bet it's not the one I picked, because I picked that stupid city card, and then ended up shuffling everything around, so... Uh, yeah, I did this in a different one, I think. Looks familiar, so it's like, well, I don't know, man. All right, so let's see what our road encounter was, which maybe should have happened on the way to her place instead of to this, but I don't know. You see a lone man walking toward you on the road. As you meet on the path, he turns to you and begins to speak. Oi there. I wouldn't suppose you lot might spare me some coin. Yes, a lot of coin, actually. You look at him quizzically, and he continues. You see, I lead a lot of thieves and bandits in this area, and we got to make sure all mouths are fed. At this, a large number of bandits come out of hiding around you, emerging from the bushes. So, about that coin, the man says with a smile. Five gold per head ought to do it. I totally would not do this, but I know what the effects are going to be. I can either pay or fight. And I would rather pay than end up damaged for the upcoming adventure. So I will pay, even though... It's not my role-playing choice. Uh, yeah, we would have three damage each. You sign hand over what coins you have. The man maintains his grin. Well, thank you, kind sirs. It was a pleasure meeting you, and have a pleasant day. The bandits move off in one direction. As you continue in the other, we lose five gold each. Now, if we didn't have five gold each, that would be fine. Um, so, in some ways, it's good to, like, drop somebody's money completely down. At other times, you have to have the money uh, in order uh, in order to pay the amounts. Get a facet of this card. If you pay them, they stay. If you fight them and defeat them, they go away. And I bet you that's true with some of, with a decent number of the cards. So there is some incentive to get rid of them. The part of the game that, in a way, that I hate the most. It's sort of like constructing a deck in Magic, but not really. You know. Um, which is figuring out what I need for the particular adventure. And to me, this is always the big bugaboo, the thing that stalls me out. Eh, this is a pain mechanically, but figuring out which cards to take, and as you go up levels, those card choices start getting higher, harder and harder to choose because you have a bigger pool of cards. I gotta make sure I have loots in here, but I also have to, you know, maybe take into account the critters I'm gonna face. There's not a lot of shield here. If there are any elite, of those imps, and there's like one of them, two of them. Um, they're gonna be able to curse me, which will be annoying. These things are really tough to kill. Uh, so are the cave bears, and they both probably deal out a decent amount of damage. These are slow. Do I have any elite bears? No. 
That's good, at least. Nor elite demons. So far, the only elites are the two forest nymphs. Um, I also have to take into account those cards. But the biggest thing is just, you know, going through this process of building a combat deck for the particular scenario. I don't like that kind of thinking. But then again, I don't like the kind of thinking of the pre-planning and plotting out your turn with the cards either. Uh, those things just don't thrill me. It's kind of why I didn't get into Gunslinger that much either. <laughs> Which, in a lot of ways, you can see the connection um, with a game like this to Gunslinger. A couple of people have mentioned Gunslinger recently, probably uh, wanting to know my opinion on that after coming to this or something. I don't know. I've just been seeing a little bit more fle a little bit more action on Gunslinger than usual in a couple of comments about it from people that have been commenting on this. I'm like, well, that's interesting. And yeah, I, I can actually see that connection for those of you who are still watching who aren't, you know, just regulars who see everything. I can kind of see the connection between the two. Um, and I would say, you know, this is probably richer because Gunslinger gives you a certain selection of cards. Here you're facing pre-programmed enemies or randomly programmed enemies instead of uh, trying to out-bluff another player, which is a little different. <sighs> yeah, I'm going to need a break before I face this. And again, you know, I mean, I've got like probably several hours tonight, well, more than enough time to finish the game, um, given the nap I took and everything. But facing this aspect of it, it's probably the hardest part for me, by, by far. Uh, it's also hard to make the decision each turn, hey, which, you know, two cards am I playing or whatever, but that feels so much more limited. It's quite often, I don't have many cards left late in the game. <laughs> which makes it very, very easy. But at the early point of the game when there's a lot of cards left for the players, it's kind of hard to make that decision. And at the very beginning of each scenario where you have to pick your deck, man, that kills me. Um, and it wouldn't be such a big deal if I wasn't doing it across three different characters. If I was just doing one character, although I hated it then too. I really hate that kind of, uh, that kind of determining uh, of what I'm going to do. I'm not really fond of the CDG thought either. Hey, which card should I play now? <laughs> you know, which cards do I have to hold? I just don't like that kind of thinking. I don't know why. Um, I don't mind it so much in Bridge. One part of why I don't like it. I don't like it because it does not suit what I'm doing here. You know, I should not be choosing between do I want to loot or will I need a loot card later right now? Or, you know, can I afford to spend this attack now when I'll never have it again? Uh, yeah, that, that, that's a big part of it because I don't feel like as an adventure, or I'll, I'll not have it for a while, as an adventure in a normal role-playing type circumstance, outside of like the cast once and forget spells of D&D or whatever, most games, you have a limited amount of resources, you know, maybe stamina and magic energy or stuff like that. That may be in play, but you don't have to worry about managing them um, in terms of, huh, gosh, I don't want to use my banish undead now because I might face worse undead <laughs> or, or whatever. And you don't have the same kind of um, plotting and and trying to balance out, you know, what your attacks are going to be over the whole time. And it's that kind of experience that I kind of crave out of these dungeon crawlers. Um, with something like Bridge, there's no story there that I have to align it to. I don't have to say, well, here I am, a great fighter. Hmm, I had better not swing a mighty blow right now because I won't have that again later. <laughs> You, you just don't tend to, that doesn't tend to be um, the thinking in the role-playing game because the role-playing game is trying to simulate a reality. And I feel like this is not trying to simulate a reality in the same sort of way because of the way the cards are designed. And that means, and, and honestly, I've got the same problem with Gunslinger in some ways, um, 
honestly, I think that like once you start uh, adding those bridge-like elements, I would rather just be playing a pure abstract way. That's all the game is. Because if I'm thinking too much about the cards I'm playing, managing my deck, my cards, etc., I'm no longer involved in the story. Now, does that bother me in Magic? No. Because Magic feels like a pure abstract to me in a lot of ways. <laughs> uh, I don't really feel like I'm telling a reasonable story. I've just it's this goofy thing where I got lines of thing cards attacking each other. That's it. Um, you know, I don't know. Anyway, I'm looking over this scenario, and it's going to be ridiculously hard. Um, not only do I have to move around and grab these loot chests, but the special rule is I can only loot them using a loot action. Well, Tinker has one loot action. It's a use once. My other two characters each have one available to them. Uh, this is going to be really, really hard. And I'm not sure it's physically possible. I mean, it, it, it is possible in the sense that I can calculate out that, yes, if it were completely empty, I could do these. Uh, he would get one, and these two could maybe get two or three loots off each. So with three, five treasure chests, we can do it. Let's say I had only one character. Let's say I only had, uh, well, let's say I had two characters, but let's say I had the Tinker and someone else who maybe didn't have a loot card that was reusable. I don't know if every char other character has a reusable loot card guaranteed to them. Um, it would be physically impossible. <laughs> um, but now add to that the fact that there's going to be monsters and everything around. I'm going to have to be careful not to use up the loot cards to get through this dungeon. Uh, not that they're necessarily terribly valuable, uh, but that's not bad. An immobilized attack, and this is definitely one of my favorite attacks. I wouldn't have this if I hadn't reached level 3. So then I'd be at two loot cards with him having to loot at least four treasures. <laughs> Wow. And he's got to be adjacent to them as well. Um, at least the other two are range two loot cards, but damn, this is going to be tough. Long time since I, uh, I, I just videoed the last little bit, but since I've been able to come up and play, emotional concerns with playing the game, I don't, I don't know what to call it. It's just, you know, sometimes it's very hard for me to motivate enough to come do something. And that's been the case here. And now this little hindrance, I don't like being faced with this. If this had no monsters in it, it would not be a trivial optimization problem to figure out. It, it wouldn't, I'm sure it could be done, but it's the kind of thing I don't want to do, even if that, that was, you know, um, the whole of the game. And now adding to it com uh, some additional you know, problems like there being monsters in my way and crap like that. I don't know. I may just walk away. <laughs> I really don't want to fucking face this shit. Um, I'm considering allowing me to just step on them and loot them that way because this is just not something I'm looking forward to at all. And it doesn't look trivial in that sense either. I still have to fight my way through all this crap. You know, I mean, I don't have to kill everything, but it becomes kind of like the last one where there are a lot of monsters that are getting in my way and causing problems. And you see nothing here. Those aren't set up yet because there's doors in the way. But when I'm stumped with something to go look at the errata, <laughs> there's a lot in this game because of all the different scenarios primarily. There is not one for this scenario. However, I found one for another scenario that looks like it probably has the same kind of special rule in it, <clears throat> which says allow people to use the bottom half of any card as a loot one. I think, uh, I think that would resolve things a little better uh, than my other alternative, which is perhaps to uh, just let people use the normal looting rule. For, for the pieces. Again, I don't think that this would be that badly dis uh, that, that, that easily solvable if you just let people loot by the normal rules because they have to run to stupid places anyway. Um, 
However, at least this burns a card. So uh, I think it comes a little closer and with, without you know going fully to just ignore the special rule for the scenario. Of examination of the situation shows something kind of interesting. Um, if I focus on one direction or the other, critters are going to be running around, going, uh, spending effort moving through boards that maybe I don't care that they're moving through. They're going to spend a lot of effort. In particular, I think if I go this way, these guys have a long way to walk to get back in touch with me. And I may have looted these two, then get up there, loot that. These guys may never make it back around to me. And they're kind of scary, these uh, earth demons. They're big. They're hard to kill. I haven't taken a lot of damage cards. Um, focusing on movement and speed. So they're what I'm going to kind of aim for. Now, it's not like the cave bears are particularly easy either. Uh, in fact, they're more dangerous, but they're fast. So I'm not going to be able to avoid these cave bears. Plus, they're right in front of me. I'm going to have to try to take them out. Um, the imps also are moderately fast compared to the earth demons, right? The earth demons are really slow. Uh, so I'm kind of counting on these guys kind of chasing me around and ending up out of position for most of the game if I do it in that, if I go in this direction. If I go in that direction, I got problems, you know? Um, so, that's that's one thing I'm going to aim for. Other than that, I'm not sure what the cards are going to uh, result in. My initial setup is all going to be down in this corner, so I'm not really as close to that side of things as I'd like to be. My picks. Pacifist, kill three or fewer monsters. Well, that was because I was faced with Scrambler, take only short rests. I like long rests better for a number of reasons, especially since he has a critter on the board. Um, actually, two, he has the bot as well if he wants it. Um, for him, I took lay about seven or fewer experience instead of killing an elite monster. Eh, both of those are possible. I tailored my cards not to really uh, generate a lot of XP this time. The damage cards are better at that. It may be underpowered, though. And then this ind ind indigent um, loot no money tokens or treasure overlay. Well, that's clearly a non-starter. I may need her to do that. On the other hand, hoarder, five or more money tokens. Well, with those loot ones, if there's some damage around me or whatever, I may grab money. And grabbing money is always a good thing anyway. Bears are a little faster than I expected. They came charging up. And they blocked my route that way. Uh, maybe I need to rethink. <laughs> uh, yeah, there wasn't really an option there. Planning to uh, the movement rates, etc., meant that summoning the battle bot didn't seem like as good an idea. And we've got two of the critters out here: the skeleton and uh, her mystic ally, which could come back up because if it gets killed it can be recreated, which is one cool factor of her throwing it out right away. Um, but now I kind of feel like I have to try to get the jump with these guys in order to let my critters have a shot at going. And then also, you know, I mean, the optimal strategy of going this way, I probably should have set up on this side if I wanted to do that, believe it or not because then it would attract the bears coming this way. Uh, the bears. <laughs> a lot of concentrated fire on the cave bears, down to one. They killed the skeleton off, though. It's kind of a shame, because that's not replaceable in, like, this thing. This thing may play out the whole scenario, for all I know. Uh, and we also, Cragheart was able to launch an obstacle and kill both the... Uh, fairies with what was really are the imps with what was really kind of a lucky series uh, because of my cheating he got the double twice oh i hope it, i don't think it was ever the bless that's in there for eating that yummy food i think it was the standard deck one got to keep an eye out for that along with the curses whenever uh they come up uh otherwise not much happened the imps are just healing things and 
they couldn't get in range of the only damaged thing that was left. And then, of course, these earth demons really slow, and I was able to manipulate the movement order of these guys. Not the order, but where this guy moved, so that nothing of value could happen. Actually, this guy moves here, because uh, now he has a path going through that way. But, yeah. And I'm going back to my original plan, which is, let's stay away from those fuckers. They're big. And let's see if we can uh, loot this treasure and work our way around uh, clockwise. To move early again, uh, a little bit of fire on these things. Kragar killed off this. And I realized I've been cheating in favor of the monsters, too. Same kind of, yeah, make mistakes, whatever. Um, the cave bear was muddled, befuddled, whatever. And I forgot to give him that penalty. So he might not have killed the skeleton. Uh, unfortunately, my little critter is getting itself into a range where it's likely to be killed by the imp. Uh, I was hoping to kill off the imps, but whatever. I didn't have that kind of firepower. Um, I had this, this is an awesome card. This is my level four card for Kragheart. It uh, allows him to move one and do a big melee attack. One reason I might want to swap out this bow, and because things with heavy shielding are kind of low, so, you know, and if you're talking about a one-point shield, it's not that big a deal to, to uh, knock it, to, to ignore it. But if you're talking about big shields, that can be a lifesaver. But on the other hand, you know, if he could use one of those weapons that's multiple use based on the mana, that would be great. Um, I ought to be thinking about whether or not, seeing as she doesn't have many cards left, whether or not she wants to create some mana. Um, I don't think it's worth it at this point. Okay, um, Tinker managed to kill... One of the fairies up here, unfortunately, imps. Unfortunately, that's his third. He can only, if he kills another thing, he loses his check mark. Okay, whatever. You know, better to win the scenario than grab check marks. Um, Spellweaver pissed on the earth elemental and looted the treasure, but uh, the earth elemental didn't or demon didn't do anything because it had a heal that came after that and it also did not get to mobilize there was no green mana available um and Cragheart, uh oh, what the fuck he did oh he almost killed this which would have been awesome but instead he suffered a curse from it and we got a couple of reshuffles i reshuffled the curse into there had to look that up to make sure that i didn't shuffle these guys in as well well we will be doing a long rest here um One of the things that I really like about this, for example, with the imps, I had no idea they had a curse in here. I know that the elite can throw a curse, so I knew the possibility was there. But it, that card allowed either of them to do any any of the imps to do a curse, which you know is kind of cool. Um, if I had somebody really fast, I would consider running up, grabbing this treasure, and running back. But I don't think I need to do that. Um, and I wouldn't be able to get around all those earth demons easily. Uh, this one's going to be hard enough. I'm glad that I went this way. I wish I had set up a little differently, so maybe I could have slipped in there quicker and gotten more behind me. But these things are pretty damn fast, so whatever. Hey, the pesky imp healed itself. Um, and the earth demon... Um, had the advantage of some green mana, so it was able to shoot both of these. It had been immobilized, which was kind of cool. But, our Tinker is in range to grab a treasure. And I haven't, uh, I haven't figured out her cards yet. She might be grabbing a uh, color mana, depending. Damn, Imp is annoying. Uh, <laughs> it fired a shot at Craghart. I thought it was going to move out. It, it's at five hits now because the Spellweaver managed to shoot it, but I thought it, first of all, I had a shot at killing it, but no. Um, if I used my bow. Uh, 
it moved, uh, I, I thought it would move here and attack and destroy itself on the crack heart, but no, I forgot it has ranged weaponry, so uh, it did not. However, this thing's working on killing itself. Uh, it did not cross into the doorway, had a choice to do so, decided against it. That means a rest for the tinker, that's going to be a long rest, I think. I might be going through the door. I gotta kind of open up a way through. Craghart should be getting his cards back. Tinker didn't go through the door was uh, to heal Craghart. Three points of healing or something like that, which was definitely helpful. <laughs> First while adventures got a little lit up here. Again, a little bit of bad luck. Um, Craghart, unable to kill the Earth Demon, came within one of doing so. Uh, with his big attack, move and attack card. Um, my initial thought had been I would drop a couple more, uh, couple more obstacles there. I'm not absolutely positive of the legality of it. It doesn't split the board in two. But then what I thought about was, you know, That'll make these guys, if it doesn't split the board in two, if it is legal, that'll make these guys kind of cluster near this doorway and I'll have to deal with them. And I don't want to do that. I want them to keep moving. Oh, so I'd rather deal with this thing. I also, uh, you know, that thing's not in, in great shape. So there's a chance of killing that. Um, Spellweaver jumped in here, did one of her big attacks, and killed two of the imps. But the shaman, the elite shaman there, which is a danger, uh, was able to take it. Take a big heavy hit, by the way. And uh, disarm, uh, disarm her. So she, she will not be launching an attack next time. Uh, she had the option to go invisible, but then it would have targeted Craghart. And I think he's got probably more capacity for dealing damage, although she doesn't. She's giving up a damage card in, in this uh, in this turn, so I don't know. She did create a huge amount of mana, which didn't work terribly well because this guy got to target both of them. Uh, <laughs> that green mana is really causing us problems. To the next room, the Tinker was considering dropping a stun trap here, but when we looked at the damage on the Earth Demon and the Fairy, Pixie, Imp, whatever, they both had one hit point left, and I'm like, eh, that's kind of a waste to go through all that timing. So I tried to, I dropped a stun on the shaman. Now, the, both the shaman and the imp moved very fast. The imp healed itself, and uh, Spellweaver got hit pretty hard. She ended up healing herself, which is not what she planned on doing originally. I should have a yellow there. Um, she was planning on improving the... Uh, you know, getting that defensive shield up. Um, but, and I'm not quite sure why I did the heal, because if I do a long rest, which I kind of have to do, I think, um, I think my card's still there. I'm only going to gain, well, I know I got room for the two hit points, so that's okay. And I've taken a lot of damage across everyone, so I'm a little worried about that. You know, some things can do damage to you without it being an attack, so this isn't sources of damage. Oh yeah it is, it's two sources of damage, okay. So that's, that's a safer thing than I thought. And I forgot to toss this. <laughs> um, his attack was, it was a one point attack and he got it doubled. Oop. He, he couldn't kill this because he'd lose his check mark if he did. It, it would have been the uh, it would have been a better attack to kill that probably. But and these things are actually lumbering a little bit faster at this point. They move down and we're ready for another one. The Tinker cast a battle bot here. That'll be available next turn at whatever speed he's got capable. I've been burning through my fast cards, so that's not terribly good. Oh, um, she's resting. Nothing much here happened. Um, demons and imps moving. They're so fast, I really should have figured out some way to do a damage to that. Um, but, Craghart ran in here. 
He ran in with the wrong attack card, it turned out. He dropped that on the Shaman instead. <coughs> and uh, suffered a couple of attacks from those bears. He was kind of hoping to drop an area of effect spell on whatever he got, but he didn't have a far, he didn't have a long enough move. You know what? Shit. Um, I actually didn't have to do that the way I did. Yeah, I'm not going to undo stuff. I forgot I have my boots. I probably got a rest coming. I could have charged forward. That was my plan. I fucked it up, though. Uh, it's hard to remember what you're trying to do, but I have trouble with that anyway. Anyway, he's down a lot of hit points, but he did some damage to the bears with his retaliations. And we got a reshuffle on the imp, and that's about it. Okay, let's try to figure this out. What happened to um? The, shaman, the Spellweaver went first, and she killed the Shaman, plinked on one of the bears. Big deal. Cragheart, uh, he did not heal himself, so he took a, he did an attack too on one of the bears, didn't kill it. Uh, but then the battle bot came in, killed the Earth Demon, and... This little fella here fired shots at the two remaining bears, killed one of them all. The imp had some interesting cards here, strengthening stuff, including that earth demon. Mm, those demons did not get to move, but they were too slow. Um, and uh, that would have been dangerous if he was close by. Now we'll see if the bot can finish him off, but it might be hard. He's got a shield. It's not much of one, though. Between the Tinker and the Spellweaver, I managed to kill this last bear. Um, the Battlebot did not kill the Sprite. It got a shot off at him. Shuffled a curse in here. Now there's three cards left. Two of them are nulls, and one's a two times. It has to be. The Battlebot luckily has a little bit of hit points, so it's got some survival there. But yeah, that's uh, it's pretty ugly having two curses and a double. And, all I need to do is two points of damage to <laughs> I just don't need the minus one that I drew. Um, I haven't figured out what I'm getting back for him. She's heading into a long rest on the next turn, but uh, what we didn't do is we didn't... She could have opened up this door, but that would have released all the Earth Demons. I got a little lucky. They moved plus ones. They're actually getting a little further away, but I'm afraid I'm going to have to fight them anyway. Uh, probably can't delay long enough um, to get them through to here, although maybe that's one of the reasons she went here and looted instead was, hey, she wants cash. Probably isn't going to get five money, but, you know, <laughs> money's good anyway. We're having a lot of trouble with her. He's pretty safe. 7 XP, you know, it, usually I can get it, but between this scenario and taking cards that didn't generate XP, I'm like, huh, I can get more bonuses, you know, because raising your level comes with penalties. Of course, the next person that raises their level brings us up to the level 3 dungeon, so maybe I shouldn't be screwing around that much, because... Uh, he's at 155. I think he's the weakest. 166, and she's up there, too. What questionable delaying action. Cragheart didn't open the door. Doesn't want the demons coming through. Uh, wants a shot to get this treasure and then make it run away from the demons. Um, but he's going to have to probably delay another turn. And He's also got the somewhat questionable XP generator there, possible, if he does launch some attacks. Uh, she, of course, rested and he looted. Over here, the battle bot attacked, missed, didn't get rid of a card, so I've got both the nulls still in there. And now that's going to throw the tinker into a rest with a wounded battle bot. No additional damage, however. Um, this thing has such interesting attacks. It just, anyway, uh, I still gotta figure out the card she's getting back. She still hasn't used her re recharge her hand card yet. Uh, 
and then she'll she'll be moving up as he waits. And I don't know what he does. If he has a heal or something, he might play. Just to do a fast recover with the tinker, so he actually did a move but between him and Cragheart. I forgot to add these two. Uh, they healed Cragheart all the way up. Uh, let me think. Six, eight points of healing, I believe. Craghart had like healing cards on both sides of his thing, really a bonus. And he was in bad shape, so that's a big deal. Uh, Battlebot failed in its task again, but it's still alive and it's still pushing this damn thing further and further away, which is just fine. It's doing its job, it's tying that imp down, and there's no problem. And the extra time, well, it's gotten us some chance for this. I don't know how good a shot we're going to have in here. Um, somebody's got to loot this and someone else run back that way and loot that and screw it, you know, the damage trap it's like a poison trap or something it's, it's not a big deal the scenario ends when I loot the two chests I think we're in fine shape uh, these are a dangerous force but it's so slow, even you know, even if I had busted through the door, I could jump over them and run in both directions and get the loots off, given how healed I am. So I feel pretty comfortable that we're going to finish this one successfully. But of gosh, I'm not sure that people are doing what they really are trying to do to succeed in the mission necessarily. Craig Hart sure is. He wants this dead soon because he doesn't get many XPs. He just wants to make sure they succeed. So he ran in, um, smacked into one. Unfortunately, they were able to move this time <laughs> as well as attack. And I think they did too much damage to him. I forgot about that minus one in there. Um, but between retaliations and his own hit, he did some damage to them, not a hell of a lot. However, the spell weaver is like, you know, I kind of want to get that treasure. I only need to get three of them. So she set up her uh, ally and is setting up to fight them. And the Tinker, well, he doesn't really care, but he was looking at, I want to move fast. And the Battlebot killed that thing off. And I want to set myself up maybe uh, to drop the stun trap if I need to just to make sure that that thing doesn't come in and screw up my day even more. Although, it's been throwing curses into the battle bot and shit, so... <laughs> I don't know. But that thing can now go chase after the Earth Demons. Great. That's not gonna make it. Um, and then we move on. And I think this... this the neat thing she's trying to convince them is, look, we're not using up a lot of cards because we're doing a lot of movement and stuff like that, and we haven't really been as combat heavy, even though we wiped everything out, um, we have the opportunity to loot here. <laughs> you know, uh, we, can, we can do things and we can gain everything that we need. The only thing that's going to end the scenario is when we take the last treasure chest. Um, other than Craghard, yeah, the Tinker is kind of okay with that. But she didn't do the right thing in that case. She should not have pulled her cards yet. Uh, she doesn't have as many cards as everyone else. But, eh, she made the decision after after she pulled them. Alright, onward. Her decides to be something of a dick. Um, the Tinker heals him. She did a blast that did quite a bit of damage. And then he attacked killed both of these and then did his loot. If he'd done it in the other order, he would have left treasure lying around for her. Um, but he's just like, he fucking asshole. <laughs> Let's just win this damn thing. <laughs> Plus, I gets the cash. Um, used his goggles so that it was negated and got a double on another one that he didn't need it on. He had a big attack. Craghart was doing the slow rest. Uh, yeah, we wiped everything out. The Tinker still gets to go. <clears throat> There's some cash, and she would really like to grab three cash. I don't know what her chances of it are. <laughs> she just threw her loot card out. Um, 
pretty much has to do probably a fast rust just uh, to try to move things along. She doesn't have a whole lot of cards left though, like I said. And it's going to be tough to grab enough up. Uh, what are other people up to? Well, Craghart's going to uh, uh, complete his rest, of course, but uh, he's still got his turn. And I don't know if he's going to go running for that or go try to grab the treasure. I think... I, I don't know. I mean... I don't want to run out of cards, and I don't want to think too hard, but uh, I would like to give her a chance at that check mark, I guess. And we managed to uh, suck up all but one of the treasure, actually. <laughs> it's pretty damn good. Um, this would have been, I think, almost impossible, playing by the rules without the modification of being able to use cards as loot ones or whatever, even loot zeros. I don't care what they are. Just the inability to loot the chests uh, without perfectly timing everything. I'm not in the mood for that kind of play, so uh, that's where we went. Now, we got some things here. Make sure I'm sitting on a chair. You pull up the last bush and hack away at its root. The grotto is alive with many hostile creatures, but with your packs now full, you make a quick retreat. Yeah, there are no creatures. Uh, and back to Gloomhaven and the crooked. Um, you ring the bell, and a good minute before entering the slanted doorway, there's no sign of hail, so you call out and wait for her. It takes much longer than you'd like. When she finally does appear on the other side of the ruined bar counter, she seems genuinely surprised to see you. Is that bite root you have there? Ha! Huh, imagine that. I was just thinking about going to get some, seeing as I ran out last week. You stare at one another in confusion. Oh, I sent you to get that, didn't I? Hale scratches her head. Right, scrying. I remember now. Hand over the root. You give her the packs full of bite root. What were the details again? Jaxara, Falrath woman, yay hi. Merchant dabbling in necromancy, wears a red cape and lots of gold jewelry. Shouldn't be too hard. Hale disappears with the root, and you begin to hear a faint banging coming from the floor above you. Eventually, she appears before you, holding a parchment covered in a thick, gooey, bite root paste. Well, there you go. Just follow that, and you should find your way to where she's hiding. You hesitantly take the map. I could have cleaned off the paste, but I thought it added a bit of charm. And we'll get the Necromancer's Sanctum. 20. Um, and I'll come back and tell you about what we scored for this, but no special bonuses other than revealing another dungeon. Oliver did quite well out of this actually, not only getting her check mark, but a ton of money, 15 cash, uh, but also a lot of XP, 11 XP. Uh, him going for his check marks, he grabbed them. It's two out of the three for this level. Uh, but wasn't going so much for XP, so he didn't get anywhere near as much. And then over here, he didn't get as much XP. He got the least XP, actually. Uh, just the kinds of cards, those one-shot cards that I like, tend to give good XPs. I don't know where we're going to go next. Um, but this was the Vibrant Grotto, and we'll load that tonight and then start figuring out. There's no pressing reason nobody's going up a level or anything to go to Gloomhaven. Uh, there's a decent amount of cash in people's hands. It might be worthwhile. There's no real harm to going to Gloomhaven. Draw a city card. Hey, those tend to be a little better. Uh, at least they don't screw you up for the next dungeon. I've pulled the cards out of uh, the combat decks. Whatever we're doing next, it probably is going to be more com more standard in the sense that we're going to be killing things. So this, this was a very odd scenario, so we'll see. Oh, but that means refactoring, you know, my hands and cards and everything in ways. That is annoying. Um, it really is kind of the painful part of the game for me is the pre-planning and then actually the per-turn planning. You know, the stuff that makes it exciting to a lot of people is actually the stuff that makes me feel kind of less willing to play it 
even if I do get the excitement out of it, I don't know how much excitement, like, I don't know if this were more of a standard dungeon crawl, how exciting it would be to be playing opposed ever, you know? I never really got into the games that were of that nature um, for opposed play. I think it would be fantastic solo still, without the burden of the card play and the pre-planning and everything that you have to do here.